All right, welcome to the next episode of UC Buyer TV. I'm fired up to be joined today by Kevin Thompson. Kevin's the new channel chief of Zoom. Started a week ago today. So Kevin, welcome to the next episode and, and welcome to Zoom. And I could, I'm, I'm anxious to hear, uh, so fill me in on uh, your new role and uh, what that means for the market. Mike. First and foremost, I've heard so much about the UC buyer, and I'm uh, thankful that you guys got me on board here, as I know that you have a big subscriber base here. Talk about a, a great first week to start last week, uh, which we were supposed to launch in Vegas, but you know we hit the ground running, and I'm, I'm just so blessed to uh, now really bring this product to the supplier and vendor portfolios of, of the channel. So uh, super excited to be here, super excited to educate. I've heard so much about you and the UC buyer, so let's, uh, let's get to it. All right, excellent. Well, we're going to run through a few topics today, among them being what's new with Zoom for the few people out there that don't know who Zoom is. You guys have been crushing it, so we're going to talk about yep. how well Zoom's been doing. But we also want to spend some time talking about something that's top of mind, which is the coronavirus crisis that's, under, that's, that's unfolding, the, the continuance of uh, just evolving news and, and just vast amounts of uncertainty. And we're going to talk specifically about workers being able to work from home and the, and the impact that Zoom's going to make on those folks favorably. And yeah. we're also going to talk about uh, some tips for IT leaders right now that are really struggling to enact their business continuity plans and the role that Zoom's going to play uh, on those fronts. So, so which one do you want to pick off and start first, Kevin? Uh, let's go with um, what it means to the remote worker. So let's talk about that. So uh, you guys have done some uh, announced some exciting things. You're making it easier for customers to to buy, and you're opening up channels that they can buy from. Yeah. So talk a little bit about what you're doing to uh, help companies enable the mo remote worker quickly. If someone told me that the entire globe will be trying to work remote in 2020. I would say no freaking way. Um, for me personally, uh, as a whole, Zoom's is so incredibly fortunate to have a product set that is going to help enable uh, the, really the, the global economy. We have the majority of K through 12 using our free licenses. Uh, our CEO lifted the 40 minute cap on free users for um, every real education institute uh, K through 12 to to use the video which is which is everything and it's it's all about really giving back so it's um it's a wild time I know the form for this discussion is all around remote workforce uh, how to do it what to do what are your what are the technologies I think a lot of companies are trying to monetize a type of a situation like this um, we're the complete opposite. We are doing anything in our power just to help. And obviously what comes from that, um, we'll see as this real growing trend is I think here to stay. And that is the, the distributed workforce. Yeah, and, you know, it's kind of interesting because you and I have, have both for the last 10 years been in the uh, unified communication space, uh -huh. which, which for 10 years we've been talking to the market customers about all the great features that you see enables, including uh, the ability to do your work, extend the PBX to uh, any device, anywhere you are. Um, and then that's ex since extended into collaboration tools, video that we're on today, uh, desktop sharing and whatnot. Uh, so those features have been out there, but, but you know, obviously they haven't been used in, in, in mass scale and that's changing at warp speed. So it's been fascinating to watch, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks in here in the UC buyer, we've been covered, talking about that a lot, writing about it. Cause a lot of companies are right now are scrambling. How do we uh, enable our workforce with the tools? So on that front, let's talk a little bit about what the, your announcement and your role, and then we'll go back through some of the things that we're doing to enable remote workers. But so you came in to lead the channel. So talk a little bit about what, what your, what Zooms, uh, lots of channel partners that I know have been dying to sell Zoom to their client base. Yeah. So let's talk about the uh, the move to hire you first. And uh, as you look at your next 100 days, let's say, what are some of the top things that you're going to be focused on getting done? Our plan was, on the which was Monday the 9th, we had our 
PR announcement from headquarters stating to the public that we can, you know, that we signed uh, three master agents for distribution rights for Zoom phone, Zoom video, and the full the full UC suite. We were going to do it in Vegas. Obviously, those plans were halted, and now yeah. everyone is at home. And again, thinking that we were going to be able to, you know, it's a crawl before you walk, walk before you run, run before you sprint. Thankfully, the plan was so well art- articulated and well thought of that now we're experiencing overwhelming demand. The, the announcement couldn't have come at a better time. As you look at how Zoom came to, founded in 2011, really started selling 2014. Um, mm-hmm. Our CEO came from WebEx where he ran that full video solution, which ultimately sold to Cisco, wanted to rewrite the code there, came up with an unbelievable plan for Cisco to reuse that code. They didn't. He and 40 other engineers left to start Zoom Video, where they could really build the architecture for a video first platform, where every other play is, well, We'll start voice and then we'll add on chat, then we'll add on video, then we'll add on this, then we'll add on API. Right. We took the mother load first from an architecture perspective, which is video, which is the most sophisticated packet out there. And absolutely you being an industry vet and true subject matter expert, before it was IP, IP, IP um, dialing, if you had right. major global infrastructure, you would run an MPLS just for your video system tough to connect in. Typically, you had to call out, especially if you had sophisticated firewall options. So going back to where the question came from and why I gave that background is we started as a video company right. and then a chat company. And quite frankly, we didn't need the channel to go and do that because we started the flywheel on free subscriptions. The product really worked well. Right. And then you started to monetize that. With the launch of Zoom phone, listen, we understand that the army of consultants out there, like yours truly, we we have to embrace them and utilize the, the channel to, to actually have uh, voice growth, uh, not only in North America, but from a global perspective. So we couldn't be any more excited for the channel community to now get fully up to speed on Zoom's capabilities, uh, pricing model, and really to be on every deal, Zoom's got a 73 net promoter score. Wow. Which is, which is higher than Apple. That's unbelievable. I did not know that. Uh, that is stunning. It just works. It's so simple. It's, I mean, the, the, the back end is so complex. Again, when you when you have a video first organization if you think about building a bridge we built the bridge to handle 18 wheelers all day long which is that video packet right then came chat smaller packet now comes voice we have the ability to not only scale but handle that type of traffic with a secure high quality sla driven metrics It, it 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 works Right. It integrates, it's secure, and now we have specific verticals with testimonials, and we're very blessed. I'm very blessed. Yeah, absolutely. Well, no, it's an it's exciting time. So you mentioned, uh, and by the way, last week, you know, I think a larger part, because I've, I've got a pretty big network on LinkedIn, but uh, I think about every, every time I hit LinkedIn, about every 10 minutes, I saw somebody talking about Zoom and the announcement last week. Uh, one of my buddies, Michael Sterl, even posted, I guess Zoom's getting into the channel this week. <laughs> and if I, I, I jokingly said, man, if I had $10 for every time I've seen a post this week, I'd be able to go take a whole army to Ruth's Chris for a nice dinner and a few bottles of wine. So uh, talk a little bit about some of the mass. The, the, I think you signed was it three master agent agreements last week that got announced. Yep. Uh, who are they with, and uh, what's happening? I know you're doing some webinars uh, this week. Um, yeah. What do you What do you expect? What, what should we expect here over the next thirty days on so the our, master agent front? Yeah, the, the strategy, and for those of 
my favorite channel folks, especially running master agents, you know, as, as we go through and in, in our growth, you know, we're not going to be forgotten, but we started out with three master agents, Avant, Intellisys, and Tolaris. They all have international. Right. So we're ramping up hopefully before the end of the month already, you know, hitting the ground running, EMEA, which is uh, European markets, Australia, and then eventually going into APAC, depending on what what master agents want to try to tackle that beast right now. So we went based on footprint, which is from a global scale and one of our big growth accelerators, which, you know, you referenced the earnings call was a major attribute to a lot of the revenue growth, which is our real global reach and which, and what's great for our North America partners here is you now actually have a true global play that you can bring to your clients, which is inevitably going to bring everyone up market yeah. and you lead with zoom, you land it. And then just think about the pull through of all the other services, smart WAN, security, you know, all through 65 Google that you have as a consultant with leading with zoom that has that shine. So my, right. our webinar on Tuesday, we kick off with Ian and Avant and that's going to be my big message is you, you got to pick a strategy as a consultant to go to your clients with, right? That's where the value is. Right. And so on that front, you mentioned earlier what you're doing with education. And maybe we could categorize today's conversation into a couple different solution sets that address what's relevant right now, which is if I'm the CIO of a enterprise, one, I'm thinking about how do I make sure that my employees are safe? And that if community spread starts uh, hitting with coronavirus in certain areas, you know, you want to have social distancing in place, which a lot of companies are doing, people are working from home. Obviously, with your background, you've got the new Zoom background uh, fired up. That's hey, see, a lot you want to see me go to New York City real quick? I would love that. Are you able to do that mid-call? Or is it locked? Uh, oh, there we are. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I got, I ordered my green screen. I saw that you guys announced that feature last week and I went on to Amazon and ordered my uh, chroma key green screen nice. so that I could, I could like that, uh, change my background. Uh, although I noticed that, you know, when we first started off, you're at your home office, so you don't necessarily need the green screen. Yeah. Um, but uh, I ordered one anyways, cause I like having good stuff. So, um, so anyway, so let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, solutions, right? So, in the education space, which is, by the way, relevant to, you know, distance learning. It's relevant for virtual events because I'm starting to see companies replace uh, oh my with gosh, traveling with virtual events. It. So talk a little bit about some of the kind of, I guess, the more multimedia solutions that you guys have geared towards distance learning, virtual events, and uh, what if you're you know leading one of these or you're leading an educational system that's contemplating how do we keep continue minimize disruption keep people safe we've seen really four major verticals of growth in the enterprise education which i'll cover the case studies there healthcare actually yeah. the public sector and then financial institutions all very similar Kate, all similar as far as technology, totally different use cases. On the education standpoint, uh, higher ed and then universities. So Stanford was our first real big mm -hmm. university that went on board. Eric, our CEO, went there. They adopted that remote learning via video early on, uh, right. online e-learning. Since then, we announced on, uh, on our Q3 earnings, uh, Quinnipiac University. We just had a press release on Texas A&M. Johns Hopkins is, I mean, really, I, th I think we probably right now, given the environment that we're in, mm -hmm. the majority of uh, educational institutions are on Zoom, whether it be free licenses or paying customer, due okay. to the fact that we have the ability through Zoom webinar and through, of course, Zoom Enterprise, Zoom Pro, based on the, the tiers that you purchase as, a, as an educational institute, 
to to do fully learning attendance, right. uh, have the ability to interact, real live emojis that you're used to from your iPhone that creates that learning environment while still being able to social distance. And again, to, to, to think that in 2020 that we would be at this inflection point, no one could have forecasted it. We're, we're just so happy that we were trying to make video and have successfully made video. Right. More importantly, video first cultures have allowed that total demographic to truly have a distributed workforce. So it was a little ahead of its time, but thankfully we have the capacity to, to handle the volumes that we're, we're experiencing right now. Right. And, and that's, that brings me to another point. If you are scrambling to get a solution in place, like we just talked about, what, what are some of the things that if you don't have that in place today, right? What are the things that you would advise decision makers on this front to look at? Because one of the things I, one of the things I worry about is the, is the infrastructure globally across, you name the platform, set up for the demand that's coming at it. Because it's not just, you know, the, the, what, what kind of connectivity does a, you know, do you have at your home? It's all the, the, the infrastructure right in across. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are now using video. Is the infrastructure for the company that you're selecting to go with set up to handle it? How, how much of an impact uh, should that be for people that are evaluating who they're going to select for the solution for their employees. Yeah, we have the ability to rapidly scale in an auto scale. So again, thankfully with updated code, I mean, there was a, there was a tweet out there. I mean, I think, I think Cisco WebEx still using code from, from the eighties. Uh, I mean, excuse me, the nineties, we have the, we're borderless. So, yeah. you know, for instance, I mean, we stood up thousands upon thousands of new servers this past weekend to handle the volume. No one again can predict that the entire world was gonna jump on your network. Knock on wood, uh, everything's been airtight. We have the brightest minds in Silicon Valley and across the world working on this architecture to make sure that it's stability. Going back to what your decision maker should be thinking of, they should be getting with their consultant and try a POC. We can get you running, up and running the same day make the mouse clicks. If after a week, we see that your usage is to a certain point, put your credit card down and buy through your, buy through your consultant. Right. It's that easy. And that's what's so powerful to the partner community is it's not that 60 day, hold your breath. I hope this thing installs. It's going to, and right. we're paying our consultants to bring opportunities to Zoom to allow us to really flex on the fact that we're going to take care of them because that's how you get a 73 net promoter score. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to a couple of folks looking at getting into this segment of the business. If you were getting into it for the first time and you got, you and I have both a uh, mutual acquaintance in uh, Mr. Steve Canton. And yep. uh, it's funny. I was talking to one of our colleagues that used to be in the space. In fact, Tim and I started our sales careers together. He's thinking about getting back into it. And I said, boy, <laughs> there's an area to get into right this minute. It's, it's selling collaboration because tons of companies that are out there right now, they're grasp, you know, they're really struggling to figure this out. And, and, and I would argue that, and I'd love to get your take on this, Kevin, it doesn't matter if you've already moved, made the move to UCAS or not. I've seen plenty of companies that made the move to UCAS. They've got 80% of their employees working from the office without any of the features enabled that would now allow them to work from home. They don't even know how to use those features, nor are they enabled across the enterprise. Yeah. Right? So you've got, uh, people everywhere, literally everywhere, struggling with how do I act, not only activate all the features I need, but how do I get my employees that don't use these tools on a regular basis using them as a means to keep people productive, keep business going forward, keep employees engaged instead of uh, hanging out and on a couch and watching TV. And, and this is a great tool to do that. So I think it's a great time if, uh, for folks that are thinking about getting into the business to do it now. And I also think you guys are well positioned on that front to help solve a big pain point in the market. And it's got to be, to me, it's really gratifying that this is a, we've been talking about this for years. And yeah. the fact that the fact that we, that we have the tools ready to be deployed literally same day that can help a business weather the storm is, is huge. And it's personally gratifying, right? Yeah, Mike, I, it's, 
And for everyone that's out listening to this, and I'm assuming it's mostly uh, partners, but if you are an IT decision maker as well, this is an inflection point in technology. It's really an inflection point in, 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 in modern America, excuse me, from the globe. You look at the world wars and significant events such as what we're going through right now, opportunity propels itself from this. I think this inflection point is what's going to push the need for a different way to do business. And that different way to do business is a distributed workforce, a true work from home culture where that brings on a whole other set of new issues, new opportunity, new companies as a result of this epidemic. We will get through this because the American people, we get through everything with, you know, with our determination. But every single CEO, business owner, small or big, is going to evaluate how nimble, how fast, how effective are my technology tools? And do I need that downtown office space to run my business? And I think the fact profile of what we're going to see from the companies that didn't see a blip on the radar from an economy perspective or did suffer, there's going to be case study after case study of tech of the, the companies that were bleeding edge that did prepare for this, that did have adoption tools like a, like a proto score, for instance, or the, or the, the lagging, which was, we're not, we don't trust the cloud yet. It's right. Blockbuster versus Netflix. Our Netflix players, they're seamlessly working. They had their morning meeting this morning. The Blockbuster players, they are worried about someone just sitting and watching Netflix all day because they can't work. Right. And that is where I think this inflection point goes. I think from our conversation, even here, Mike, the, the one big takeaway is the time is now to best brief yourself on the cloud in itself and then the real, the real titans in its respective category. You have your, your security, you have your Google and Office 365, you have your Salesforce and that's right. And then you have a lot of different options around unified communications, video. And I think you just have to look at the trends of ease of use. And then that video first culture, which is a few players that can actually handle that type of infrastructure and setup. And thankfully we, we love our poker hand at zoom right now. And no doubt, no doubt. So let's talk about, I uh, love the analogy of businesses that look like Netflix have prepared for something like this versus those that look more like blockbuster and aren't prepared. The good news is that because of the, how easy it is to deploy the technology. If you are flat footed and in that position, you can get the tools in place uh, yes. very quickly. And there's some certain elements that we've been certainly writing about some of the tips to do that, but what would your top tips or recommendations be to decision makers, uh, CIOs who are weighing their options right now and trying to speed and get into place very quickly the tools to enable full workforce mobility. Right. Uh, what, what advice would you give to them right now? And in terms of one, how to select the right solution Two, once you do, how to, how to drive that adoption to the individual users. So first subscribe to the UC buyer and listen and update. I love that and, plug. Yeah. Nice plug. No, but in all seriousness, I mean, education is the reason why the, a lot of the companies that you have worked with are seamlessly working right now. The, in the event that you are caught flat-footed, um, it's, it's very simple. Everyone has internet, whether it's LTE, right, off of your cell phone or your traditional internet at your house, Starbucks, even though that you should be social distancing, you still can immediately stand up a remote workforce. And all it is is going to your trusted advisor, asking about, hey, I need to get 20 to 1,000 employees. You pick your employee count number up and running on, on Zoom. And 
we want our numbers to be ported over. Uh, we want to keep our numbers so we don't have to change up business cards. You'll see after an online form in about two meetings, we could rapidly implement your solution. I can't promise you same day, but close to uh, yeah. given the employee count. And um, that's the power of the trusted advisor and really the group and demographic that I'm talking to is that there is no lag when it comes to implementing solutions like this because we're, we are truly cloud-based. We truly right. own our own staff. We are not dependent on anything other than Zoom's capabilities and our great people. And yeah. thankfully, we've built a, a culture and an operation that can is, is handling this volume and some of the biggest logos in the world right. are, are scrambling today trying to implement our solutions. No, that's great. And the toolkit, it's, it's fairly simple. I mean, lit, now you and I are using, um, yeah, we're on enhanced, it right now. but you know, literally what you need is a laptop or hell you, you can use, do it on an iPad. You yeah, need to have high speed, anywhere. you could have high speed internet. Then, you know, you get a headset, like I'm using like a, you know, poly headset that, uh, mm -hmm. connects to both my desktop phone as well as my computer, you know, you can use a mic like this if, if you want a really high, you know, high-end experience, but you could use the AirPods that you, you have in your ears. And hell, you can use the, the laptop, but what I'd argue is that if you really want people to embrace the technology, the experience is better if you've got, you know, a headset and you've got, you know, I'm, I'm looking into a Logitech high-def camera. There's, you know, Poly makes cameras, uh, you know, there's other ones you can buy and they're not that expensive. I mean, they're 39 bucks on Amazon, I think. But any other tips you get for people that are working from home? And, I, and obviously the Zoom background is pretty cool because... Oh, yeah, let's let's rip through these. So if you don't, if you're not exactly feeling your, uh, your house is up to... Uh, the cleanliness level, given the kids are running around and ripping it apart, you have the ability now to change your green screen. This is Pine. Oh, I love that. What course is that? That's uh, 18th hole at Pine Valley. Nice. So now you're an astronaut. This, you can actually have video backgrounds, so it's actually moving. Wow. Yeah, and then uh, I did the city view from actually Polycom in, uh, in Times Square. So, yeah, very, very, again, it's, it, it's built for the millennial which is where the entire workforce in our future is going and we're just so happy to help our clients us donating k through 12 is significant and just shows the core values of eric and our company that it's it's a total people first operation we're here to help free licenses paid licenses Get with your trusted advisor. Mike, thank you so much for having us on the UC Buyer. We well, I'll tell you, it. it's, it's been uh, great having you on today and exciting times for you. I'm sure we're going to have you back because uh, this topic is highly relevant for folks yes. that are scrambling right now. And it's got to be really gratifying to be in a position where you can make an impact literally on the economy and people's yeah. well-being. Because the other thing, we, by the way, the other thing we, I want to pick your brain on real quick is, you know, if you're, you, you and I have both been in you know, executive level positions, right? Where you've got, you know, I got a board meeting coming up for a company I sit on board on this week on Wednesday, Thursday, we moved that to a virtual meeting. Boards and executives today, if you don't take the proper action now, you're talking about potentially liability issues because you're putting your employees in a harmful, potentially a harmful environment. Yeah, so, so it is one of those things that you're putting in place the tools that enable business to move forward, you're enabling employees to be safer and for the economy to do better than if you didn't have access to these tools. So I, I think it's outstanding that you guys are doing those things and it's, uh, it's going to be exciting to see what the future holds for Zoom. So Yeah, and I'll leave you on this. You don't say, hey, let's call a taxi. You say, call an Uber. Soon it's not going to be, hey, let's do a conference. Let's Send a Zoom. Zoom. I think it's so. I think it's already there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we got to get the partner community behind it. But uh, yeah, no doubt. Always a pleasure, Mike. You're a total pro. Well, Kevin, thanks again. Appreciate it, yeah, and you have a great you. one.